Okay, welcome back to the Hammer Editor tutorial. I'm John, John Z. Hodgson, and uh, this is part six of the Hammer Editor tutorial. And this is going to be kind of a short one until we get on to more, um, more pressing matters. This is a short uh, tutorial on how to use and build cube maps and how to deal with reflective surfaces in your um, in your uh, in your map and it's kind of on its own because there's no really good place for it in the other tutorials and it's just a goofy thing that you have to do in order to prevent your map from looking like garbage so you may have noticed that um, on your uh, control point in the game or on some of the weapons um, like the uh, snipers uh, sniper rifle scope the demo man's bottle um, you'll see like a purple checkerboard pattern that crisscrosses the whole reflective surface and uh, that's pretty annoying so what we're going to be doing essentially is getting rid of that and replacing that checkerboard pattern with a real reflection of our game world and uh, this is a job that uh, entities called cube maps do so go ahead and go to your entity tool and then go find type in env underscore cube map and then select it and place one in your game world next to your control point. Now I want to show you another little trick here. If you haven't already figured this out, we've got this big um, trigger entity right here um, and it's going to be difficult kind of to work around so I'm going to turn it off temporarily by going over here into the viz groups um, box over here and then you can see if you have if you're under the auto um, tab here you can click any of these check boxes and they will turn off that specific um, type of um, uh, object that's in your uh, that's in a hammer so I'm going to switch off triggers and then our trigger uh, object has disappeared uh, be sure to turn it back on when you compile the map but for right now um, let's leave it off so it's easier to work I'm gonna put the cube map entity in my world it looks like a little sphere and I'm gonna try to put it uh, right in the center of our of our uh, control point and then make it about eye level doesn't really matter if you're a little over or under not too big of a deal okay and now I'm going to need to uh, place a few more at places that make sense so a little bit of explaining what they do cube maps are um, th what they do essentially is they take a series of pictures of the world around them they take pictures of all four of their sides north south east and west and then a picture of the top of them for example, this cube map would take a picture of the ceiling up here, and the bottom it would take a picture of the floor. And it uses those six pictures to give information to um, to entities that have reflective surfaces in in the world. Uh, for example, the the sniper rifle or the uh, the demo bottle, and also um, things like the um, uh, control point or any uh, metal type of uh, or reflective surface that you might have uh, any texture that has what's called a, a specular map or um, ability on it and on your textures menu it's this little S right here tells you that it's a um, a reflective surface I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there just for uh, for giggles you'll be able to see a little bit better what the cube map is doing so, and since you don't want the um, cube map to reflect the same thing throughout your entire map, you're going to need more than one. For example, there needs to be a nice cube map inside this red spawn room so that it will give reflection of what's inside the spawn room when a player is here, and it'll give a different reflection through this cube map when a player is on the control point, for example. So space them out in, so that you can get like smooth transitions between 
cube maps, depending on where the player is in the world, as the reflection will change as the player moves through the world. Also, it's a good idea to put them in places that have um, changes to the lighting. For example, uh, if one area is a really bright light or a different colored light, and it's a good idea to put its own cube map in there so that it will uh, it guarantee that the player sees the um, gets the uh, correct reflections inside wherever that unique room or world is. For example, this is kind of a is a unique area in my map because it's going under the bridge. It's going to be a little bit shaded and it's going to have this light. So it's going to be a much different reflection down here than it would be out in the open here. So that's why that's there. You'll get used to placing these all over the map and you'll, if you watch your um, going through your map and testing it, you'll be able to see um, through uh, using certain weapons or um, and uh, like the demo model is what I use. And you can see the reflections that make sense in, in your world. Um, so it'll take a little bit of getting used to. But placing them in Hammer is actually very simple. After you've placed a whole bunch of them, then let's turn back on the triggers, save it, and then I'm going to start build, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to build the map here, uh, compile it, and there's a few more things we need to do inside the game in order to get our uh, cube maps up and running. Once you start the game, hit tilde key to bring up the console, then type in mat specular zero. This will turn off all of the reflections that are already in your map so you won't be reflecting reflections when you build cube maps. This will take a little bit, but when it comes back up, type in build cube maps. This will take pictures of all the areas that your cube maps are in and build those uh, reflection areas. Then type in Matt Specular 1 again, and this will turn back on your reflections, this time using the cube maps that you've been working with. From here on out, you could do two th one of two things. You can either turn off your Team Fortress game entirely and then restart it with your map, and this will work, or you can type in the commands that I'm just about to give you. Either way, once you start your map, all of your reflections should be in their correct places. Thanks, and I'll see you next tutorial.